How's it ladies and gents, Afri Gamer here and welcome to my channel. So we are back with Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord and today we are finally going to be getting ourselves our workshop. Um, we've almost got enough money but we do have desert horses which we are wanting to sell. Um, I'm thinking up here in Epicrotea which is where I'd also like to buy our workshop. I'm aiming for a smithy. So yeah, we're that's what we're going to do today. Um, in the last episode, I showed you guys uh, an interesting way to level up your riding skills. So if you guys want to see that, then um, I'll link a card in the top right hand corner of the screen. So you guys can click through to check that out. But yeah, I mean, you know, in that video there, the one battle, I got a plus eight increase on my riding skill. So it definitely does the job really nicely. So go check that out. Um, okay, well, we're on our way now. And yeah, I've, I did sort of touch on, um, on workshops in a previous episode, but I want to show you guys, a, you know, more sort of in-depth, full explanation. Whoop, we've got someone here. A mission, let's talk to them quickly. Huron, who, what Runag? Runag, Runag, mm, okay. Let's see. Can you tell me about the Battle of Pendrake? I was there. Many of the Crusades went, mostly the Karite clan, who were hungry for glory. But I was also young and hungry for glory, so I went along as well. Okay, cool. The Batanians had planned an ambush up in a wooded, in a wooded pass for the Imperial Vanguard when the Vlandians and Sturgeons were to come sweeping down on their flanks in the battle. Oh, then the Vlandians and Sturgeons. Our scouts found the Batanian ambush, but Noretsis did not listen and blundered into it anyway. While Noretsis' vanguard was getting slaughtered, we met the Vlandians, but the Vlandians brought lots of crossbowmen and our horse archers took heavy losses. Eventually the armoured Imperial cataphracts showed up and rolled over the crossbows, but we were caught in a melee with the Vlandian knights, and that was where things got bloody. We won barely with the help of the Imperials, but the Karaites were mauled. Since then, the Karaites have been rather weak, and you know what happens to the weak. Still, no one told them to put all their eggs in one basket like that. Wow. Pretty brutal, man. Okay, back on our way. Let's take a look quickly. How many we, need? we still need to go? I think we're on six now. Yeah, six. Getting there. Okay, up to Epicrotea. Speed up. Why are my guys so slow? I've got like a whole bunch of horses in my inventory. Anyway, it is what it is. I'm really loving the map in this game. They've done it so well. It looks so awesome. Cranerog Castle has been given to Dragon Ball. No, Cranerog barely took it. So yeah, I'm gonna say say again. I'm definitely seeing the game. There's a lot less of the steamrolling happening. Um, looks like the Karaites have taken two cities from the Northern Empire here, but overall it's a lot better. So yeah, that's great. Okay, so let's uh, start this little look at workshops in Mountain Blade Two Bandlord. So we're going to Epicrotea and. I'm aiming to buy a smithy and the reason for that is number one there's a hardwood town over here and number two there's an iron ore town over here so the reason that I'm looking at what towns are in the area is because the workshops rely on the raw materials from you know nearby towns to make the products that they're making basically so for example setting up a silversmith over here is not going to make much money at all because there is no silver ore in the area at all. So that's when you're setting up a workshop, you want to look at what the resources are around you. And a good way to know if the city itself is getting those resources is to go into the city and come into the trade tab. So you scroll down well, after it all loads. You scroll down to the area where all the raw resources are. So 
obviously there's quite a bit of food here so we're looking at hardwood they've got a lot of hardwood and quite a bit of iron ore so that's why it's a good idea to make ourselves a smithy let's see what else they might have in this area they've got uh, yeah so they've got a fair bit of clay um, and I think there might be a potter in this town as well but we'll go and take a look so check out all the raw resources um, so hardwood is good for obviously the smithy as well as a wood workshop and iron ore is if I'm not mistaken mostly just good for the smithy so let's sell our horses done okay so you need about 15,000 gold um, that's on the safe side to buy yourself a workshop some of them do seem to cost a bit less some of them 10 I haven't seen one that goes over 15,000 yet so the place that you find a workshop or the way that you buy one is you need to take a walk around the town center so let's go okay so now that we're in the town you want to press alt to take a look at where all of the, the shops are so there we see there's a smithy a tannery and you can sort of see behind the others there's a wood, wood workshop over there as well so we're looking for the smithy it's interesting there's no um, potter in this town so maybe there's a town nearby that's got a potter um, see there's a little graph graphical glitch there I'm seeing that in a couple of towns that I go to, into anyway something that I'm sure they'll fix eventually so we're coming over here to the smithy so sometimes in some of the towns the little marker above it will point you to a closed door um, just you know walk around the building basically and eventually you'll find an opening so once you find the opening you come in to the workshop and you find yourself one of these shop workers there's quite a few of them around shop workers shop workers and then you talk to them and there we go I would like to buy this workshop so 14,753 gold yes now here you get a chance to change the workshop to a, to produce something different so the options for workshops are smithy which is what this one is you get a brewery a velvet weavery a linen weavery a wine press a pottery shop olive press press wool weavery tannery wood workshop silversmith and that's it so if you want to keep it the the type of workshop that's already here which i found generally the workshops which are already in the city are the ones that are going to be quite profitable so on second thought i don't want to change what we are producing go on like this so lenny gives a little bit of an explanation smithies are the heart of every military iron ore is forged into weapons and arm in a smithy with some hardwood smithies also producing tools are you sure you want to open a smithy so here they also explain a little bit about the different types so let's go back i'm going to take a look um, at some of the other ones yes so a brewery mere grain is taken and brewed into beer few things keep the common folk and troops as happy as beer are you sure you want to open a brewery let me think again velvet weavery fine cotton is weaved into even finer velvet in this workshop velvet is one of the most luxurious goods in Colorado. are you sure you want to open a velvet weavery let's check another one linen so coarse flax is weaved into useful linen in this workshop many folks buy it for general use it is also essential for making garments and armor in other workshops are you sure you want to open this and uh, think again wine so winery buys the winery buys grapes from the market and produces wine which is always in demand all around Colorado. are you sure you want to open this next one pottery um, form clay into pottery there are no household rich or poor that can live a day without some pottery think again olive press olives are pressed into smooth oil in olive in the olive press and oil always fetches a good price on the market a wool weavery this workshop makes garments out of sheep wool garments are always in demand a tannery raw hides are little good for anything but in a tannery we turn them into leather and light armors a wood workshop strong hardwood has many uses crafts craftsmen take hardwood here and fashion bows and arrows bows arrows and shields from them 
and then finally the silversmith. Rare silver always turned into valuable jewelry in, in the silversmithy. Jewelry is the finest of all trade goods. Okay, so we're going to keep it as, as it was. And then there we go. Click yes. And that's it. Then you've got yourself a workshop. So what we'll do now. So I'll show you over here. You click on the clan um, button over here. L. Or you just click on the button. And then you come over here to other. And then it shows your ironmonger. So it's making zero at the moment. Um, for one reason or another, it will take a little bit of time for the the production to start up. So let's wait a little bit over here. So yeah, you guys must experiment with what workshops you want to do. Um, I feel like a velvet weavery might be a good one as well because yeah, as you said, velvet is a quite a pricey trade good, and there are quite a few places that um, produce. I think it was cotton. He said. So yeah. Okay, let's wait one more day. Already there, I had turned a profit. And there we go. So 37. So back into the clan tab over here. Other. And you can see now it's making 53 gold. And as time goes by, it'll slowly but surely generate more and more um, profit. And obviously, it's a great way to cover all of your, your unit expenses. So at the moment, mine is negative 29, but I'm making plus 53. So then you don't have to worry about... Your, your unit upkeep expenses. At the moment, um, they had some issues with certain workshops earning crazy amounts, like 2,000 a day. They put sort of a temporary fix in place where a workshop can only earn about 200 gold a day at this point in time, which is fine for the time being. You can still cover a lot of units' wages with 200 gold. So, yeah, that's it on workshops, guys. I hope it was useful for you. Um, I'm going to continue with my Let's Play, so if you want to stick around, you're more than welcome. And yeah, thanks very much. Okay, so now that we've got ourselves a workshop, I'm thinking that we must maybe look at building up our units to start um, our, our goal of, of conquering the whole of Colradia. So we've got Sturgeons and Imperials. Let's go and recruit ourselves some more Imperials and begin hunting down bandits. And it's great now because because we've got all of our troops expenses covered uh, we don't have to worry about you know their their expenses <laughs> basically so now we can just sort of focus on fighting and leveling them up yeah so it's a good solid group of units here um, i'm thinking a good a good thing to do is we'll join one of the Imperial factions for a while as a vassal um, just so we can build up our leadership and so on and so forth. Okay, attack. Uh, let's have our guys stay here. Onward! Do ourselves a little bit of horse archery. Level up that riding skill. Whoa! Whoa, jeez. It's a weird glitch that I've seen it happens every so often. When you get to take damage. See if we can soften these guys up a little bit before they come and fight my um, my units over there. So a great way to do this horse archery, is a little aside, is just ride around them like this. They seem to, by and large, not be able to throw their, their rocks if you sort of keep fairly close to them and don't drive, ride too fast, drive. <laughs> With me and my one horsepower car. So yeah, just ride fairly close and keep it fairly slow. And they just seem to keep turning around, turning around, turning around with you. And you know, it's fairly effective. Then you don't get too many rocks thrown at you. Although I did see in a recent patch note, note they reduced the accuracy of rocks, which is also great. Don't know how much they reduced it, but it's like my horse is... Uh, it goes down. Charge, men! Yeah, there I go down. 
Ah oh, well. Managed to take quite a few of them out and injured quite a few of them as well, so. Yeah, I guess maybe the rock accuracy wasn't that far down. Oh, I suppose the horse is also a very big target, so. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, wow. Yeah! My guys, some of them are getting nailed. Looters are stronger than they look. That didn't go as well as it could have. <laughs> anyway. Oh, we lost three guys. They were all recruits though, so I guess it's not too bad. We can live to to um, lose some recruits. And you see there, seven bow skill and one horse skill. I'm not even going to take the prisoner. They're worth so much. I've, I've sort of realized that in my personal playthrough that these looters, they're not even worth the time taking as prisoners. Um, but they... Their gear, you'll get a f you know a fair bit of money out of it, so that's worth it. Um, let's see, some people want to level up. Wrong tab. No. Let's go and recruit ourselves some more people, some more peasants or recruits, I suppose. Recruit troops. Uh, let's wait here for a few moments. Let some of our guys heal up quickly. We have a surgeon. Let me take a look. So, in your clan window over here, you can assign certain jobs to certain um, units. So, for example, um, Willowbarkia area, her medical skill is quite high, so you can assign her as being a surgeon. I'm not entirely certain at this point in time what difference that makes, but. Um, I assume it's intended to make some kind of difference, so I just do it. Maybe it's just flavor, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, let's go and save the poor peasants. Help the villagers. Let's go. Okay, so the villagers are just gonna charge in. Sergeant, so I'm. You are on command. Oh, my guys are gonna. are gonna wanna. Move. Come and hold this Stand area here. What kind of formation are they in? Shield wall? Uh, okay. Let's get my infantry. Shield wall. Shield wall now! And then Warrior! they can do what they want. Listen up, and they can do what they want. Me. Follow your sergeants. Uh, you know, I said I said I was gonna save the peasants and uh, it looks like they're getting massacred. Let's charge in, hopefully we can save one of them. Nope. Hopefully they all didn't die. Yeah, life's tough. Being a peasant. Listen here, you. Bastard. Ooh. Yeah, they all got fairly injured. So. I thought the rock accuracy was supposed to be down. These guys are still hitting pretty, pretty accurately. Ah, ah. Ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> Gonna catch me. Okay, I'll let the, those guys go to my to my unit so that they can level up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, let me get this guy. There we go. Nice. Yeah, Agoros. We've uh, gained some relations. I yeah, got plus three on my bow. Not bad. infantry leveled up. Take their few odds and ends. Where's Argomos? Oh, sorry, it was Potmus, not Argomos. How many units are in here? Four. So that would just be a duel, in essence. Um, okay, cool, cool. Let's go see if there's any more people to recruit over here. There we go. Oh, there's some uh, sea raiders over there. Wondering if we should uh, attempt to take them on. See how many of my units are healed up. 
Mm, I would like those Imperial infantrymen to be healed up before I take them on. Them Sea Raiders is they can be a bit nasty. Uh, recruit troops, trade, that's what I was wanting to do. Get rid of all this bandit junk, looted junk, whatever you want to call it. And all of those two as well. Done. So one thing that I really actually I quite like about this game is that they weren't doing it in the previous game is your, your units actually have to come around to where the gate is. It's a nice little detail uh, that they've added in whereas before you could you know literally enter the city from any direction. This one here you have to go around to the gate which is I think it's really cool. Nice little detail. Although in a city like this there would generally be more than one gate. Um, now, well, it is what it is. Still waiting for two of our people to heal up. But let's find some looters. We've got the speed. I'm gonna get both of them. No, just one. Yeah, yeah. Surrender or die. So, a great way when you're wanting to sort of level your units up and you're mostly chasing after looters, you can auto sort of let the, the AI do the whole battle. Um, so you just say send troops and then it'll show you a, a layout of what happened or readout of what happened in the battle. So, see three of my guys got knocked out but we defeated them and you can see some of them also got the experience. So. This is a good way if you don't want to go into every single battle and, um, and do it yourself. Spearman or Berserker? Let's take a look at their tube tree quickly. So we're either going a Berserker, which is a guy with an with an axe, or we're going with Spearman. I'm wanting to maybe come to these veterans over here. Like I've said before, I really like units that have your melee units that have javelins as well. Makes a lot of sense to me. So we're going with the spearmen. And these guys, I'm thinking of leaving them like this and for the time being with their javelins. Uh, yeah, that was good. That guy looks like he's going to catch them, so. Taken prisoner by step bandits, oh dear. Mm. Yeah, let's take these five guys on over here. Fight me if you dare. But I'm not going to auto do this because... So, I found that the, the results of an auto battle vary quite a bit depending on what enemy you're fighting. So, looters is fine. I barely, I don't think I've ever actually seen any of my units die to looters. They just get knocked out. But sea raiders, all the other kind of bandits, you definitely find people dying. So I'm going to do this battle myself. Okay. I'm going to send all my guys back. Maybe get my... Hear me. Warriors. These guys can Command get Command is yours. Soak up some of the, the javelins and whatnot from the, the, loot, the sea raiders. Wanted to say looters. Mm -mm. Oh, jeez, in the head. Yeah, that does, that looks like it's a bit more than a flesh wound. Yeah. Where am I, guys? Let me instruct my people to get into shield wall. Forward. Okay, let me, let me tell them all to advance. Move forth. No, 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 no. Mm. Caught that on the shield. Oh, there goes my horse down. That was not good. Mm. 
Yeah, in the melee. Stay strong, shields. Yeah, shield wall wins. That's why you want shields. Shield wall is nice. Did I lose anybody? No, I didn't. Perfect. So, sea raiders are definitely worth capturing. They fetch a bit more um, at the at the slave market. Done. And the the stuff that you loot from them is also worth a fair bit more. So that's great. Now there was another group here somewhere. Eight, uh, six. I'm feeling like we could probably take them on. Are they running from me? Yes, they are. They're running scared, boys. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh, all of my other guys are, are knocked out, my companions. So, we'll be relying on the on the infantry. We do have look at these two guys standing in line here. Move forward. Um, keep your shields high, boys. Throw your javelins. Oof, one of them got hit there. This guy doesn't have any shields here. Ooh, there we go. One of them got taken out. Hold him there. Run some flanking maneuvers. Don't let them get around. There we go, boys. Hold the shield wall. Nice. That's what we want. That's what we want. Yeah. Not even a person knocked out. Yeah, there we go. Got some nice, uh, nice prisoners there. Level this guy up to a trained infantryman. Done. Oh, these harpoons, they're really, really nice. I enjoy using them as well. As a thrown weapon, they one-shot a lot of people. And this is definitely better than the shield that I've got, so I'm going to keep that. Nice bit of loot here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Looking cool. Take the rest. And done. Okay, let us go and get rid of our prisoners and sell some of our loot over here in Amor. Tavern district. So this guy here, Yorig the fish, he's, he's like a criminal. Uh, oh no wait, he's a scout. We do kind of need a scout. He's a bit devious though. There's a different scout that I quite like. Let me show you guys. His name is... Here we go. Frostbeard. Aston Frostbeard. Where is he located? Barnovapol. Barnovapol. Let's go and get him. We've got we've got some money to splash around now. Now that we're not worrying about uh, troop upkeep. Um, what was I doing? A trade. Let's get rid of all of this junk over here. Harpoons. I think we'll keep that. Maybe the shield. One of my people might need a shield. Let's sell this shield, get ourselves one of these, we're going to give it to the new guy. Uh, spear, spear, sell the axes. Wait, maybe our shield maiden should have an axe. Feels, feels about right for a shield maiden. Let's give her maybe this, where's this axe that I sold? Axe, 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 axe. axe. Was it this one? Let's see, 75 cut, 47 cut. That's a nice axe. Give that to her. Oh, did I just buy? I will pay that much. Why? What? Oh, I just bought. <laughs> I bought like all of the the shields, 87 of them. I was like, what? 
crazy now. I'm not going crazy, oh, it's at the bottom. So we want one, and we'll sell this blade over here. Yeah, so she's got an axe, pretty cool. And then, oh, we should get a horse, I'm thinking. Or they have a desert horse. We aren't going to be able to give any fancy horses to this guy. We'll give him the saddle horse for now. So, yeah, done. Let's leave. So we're going over here to Bonovapol. Get ourselves a scout. So scouts, what they do is they will show tracks. So um, tracks from you know units, groups, whatever you want to call them, other parties. That's the right word. So they'll show the the tracks, so you can check the tracks and see information about roughly how long ago the the party passed through, roughly how many people there are, and they also help to increase your movement speed on the map. So definitely very useful scouting skill. Um, Tavern district. Oh no, and he's moved. Now we've got this break skull guy over here. Where was he? Where did you go, man? You're not in one of our What I have noticed is some of the. Oh, okay. So here's the problem. So some of the the companions don't seem to show up if your clan tier is still zero. So we're gonna need to raise up our clan tier. To be able to get him um, so I'm thinking maybe next episode what we can do is come over here and try and take out this hideout the sea raider hideout and um, that gives you a fair bit of um, renown and then we'll continue hunting some bandits get our clan here up and then go and see if we can get ourselves a scout so yeah that's all we've got for today guys thanks very much for watching if you enjoyed the episode don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button um, so you'll get notified for the next video that I release and also leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching guys and remember take it easy. Bye!